Hi guys, this is Cal Patterson of the Star Killer Guitar here. Um, no doubt we're all excited for the Six Nations upcoming. Um, it's an honour to be back doing a video again for Brandon's channel. I'm mainly going to talk about Scotland, how I think we'll do, and our upcoming game against Italy, and who I would have in my starting lineup. Obviously, um, the Scottish club teams um, have done well in Europe so this season, both getting to the quarterfinals, which hopefully should be a confidence boost for our lads going into the Six Nations. Uh, Edinburgh have been doing really well, Glasgow less well, but uh, did enough to get to the quarterfinals of the European Cup nonetheless. With the team we have, our biggest weakness is definitely we're missing our captain John Barkley, who is obviously out for, don't know when he's going to be back. Hopefully he'll be back, he'll, I'm sure he'll be back in time for the World Cup, but I don't know if he's going to play at all the Six Nations. And then we've got Hamish Watson, who's obviously out for the first two games at least with a bad hand injury so um, they, that would be I say our biggest problem is the back row or, um, with those two they're absolutely quality back rowers for us um, without a doubt our best flankers available and both out injured for the first two games so that might be a telling factor I'm um, just hoping the guys who step into their place can do well I'd say our strength is definitely our back line um, on a good day if we can uh, get the ball moving, if Finn Russell um, controls things from number 10, I think we could be a threat to anyone, uh, definitely. And I think it's also a positive thing that we're our first game is against Italy, so hopefully if we can get a win under our belt uh, very early, it'll give us confidence for at least a good campaign. And who knows, maybe a winning one. I mean, <laughs> I, I know I might be sounding... Uh, off the scale there, but you know, we've got three home games at Murrayfield, um, so obviously the away games are always going to be tough, but well, you know, if if luck goes our way and if we play our best, you know, we'll see what happens, but let's talk about the lineup I would pick for the game against Italy. Now, in the forwards, as it's coming up on the screen there, in the forwards, I've gone for all in but a front row, uh, considering how well they've all been doing, most especially Stuart McAnally at number two, who has, I think is on the way to becoming a really top, top hooker. Um, he's been absolutely excellent for for Edinburgh this season. His line-out throwing's been good. He's been great in his carrying, good around the park as well. So I think he's going to be a real asset for this team, especially with all the other injuries we have at hooker. Um, and I think Stuart McAnally is well on his way to becoming a really top, top hooker, so hopefully he can do the goods on Saturday. In the second row, I'd go for Sam Skinner alongside Grant Gilchrist. These two, I thought, played very well together in November when they did play together, and I'd like to see them go again on Saturday, see how they get on. Um, folk might be wondering, why are you not starting Johnny Gray? But the truth is, Johnny Gray has not been at his best this season at all, um, and I think it would do him no harm if he was dropped to the bench and given a break, at least for the Italy game, but um, I'm strongly thinking that Gregor Townsend will pick Johnny Gray, but I'd go for Skinner and Gilchrist in the second row, and hopefully they do well together. Um, I don't see why they couldn't, because they're both in pretty good form for Exeter and for Edinburgh, respectively. In the back row, this is where, obviously, a lack of experience comes into play with Watson and Barkley out. But I would keep Jamie Ritchie at number six because he's been still doing well for Edinburgh and in his performance against Argentina in the last autumn game, he didn't do anything to merit being dropped at all. So I think he deserves to keep his place. And number seven was an interesting one because John Hardy's uh, back in the squad after over a year out and... Um, but the uh, thing is, he's playing for Newcastle now, but the thing is, he's been quite in and out the Newcastle team from what I've seen. Whereas uh, Gary Graham, who's also in the squad, has been pretty, he's been playing for Newcastle more consistently and he's been playing pretty well from what I've seen of him. So I'd give Gar Gary Gray a bash at seven and see how he gets on. But again, I have a feeling that uh, it might be John Hardy who's at seven, either, either that or it will be... Uh, Jamie Ritchie at seven and Sam Skinner will be at six with Gilchrist and Gray in the second row. But we'll see what happens. At number eight, this is where we really lack a world-class number eight, a world-class ball carrier. And the options we have available, we've got um, Adam Adam Ash, we've got Ryan Wilson, we've got Josh Strauss. Um, Adam Ash has been playing pretty well for Glasgow this season, but... Um, 
in recent weeks he's been a bit eh, he's not been at his best. Um Ryan Wilson, I think you know, he's a decent grafter, he's got a bit of grunt about him, but he's not a strong enough ball carrier at eight and too often for my like he's gone missing, but I've I've gone for him just for experience more than anything at number eight number eight um and I've gone for Josh Strauss on the bench to come off and make an impact even though I don't think I don't rate Josh Strauss that particularly highly either um we need a real world class number eight who's um gonna get us around and you know I don't know if there's one out there I mean that guy Blade Thompson who's at the Scarlets who's injured just now uh, might be a good option going forward but um it is a position we need to look at and look at getting someone good in but yeah that's that's the forward pack that I would pick for Saturday. On to the backs now and I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory as it's coming up on your screen right now Um, obviously Greg Laidlaw captain and um, Finn Russell 10 and um, and the rest and the rest of them would be are pretty much picked for themselves but the one surprising thing you might think there's I've gone for Christine at 12 and why have I done that because I think Christine has been the best form 12 in Scotland and um, in, in recent months he's been very consistent for Edinburgh doing well he runs pretty good lines for the most part and um, so I think I'd give him a go against Italy although I think uh, Gregor Townsend will go for um, Peter Horn with maybe uh, with maybe Sam Johnson on the bench or Chris Harris on the bench, I don't I don't know either. But I, I predict Peter Horn will play at twelve. But I would go with Chris Dean uh, and on the wing I'd go for Blair Kinghorn over Tommy Seymour just on form. I think Kinghorn's been a bit better, and the rest of them obviously Stuart Hogg if he's on his game um will be a threat to any team and obvious and obviously Hugh Jones as well and Sean Maitland. Um, who's been in very good form for a very good Saracens team this season. On the bench, um, I have gone for this bench. Uh, I think most of it pretty self-explanatory. I've gone for George Horn over Ali Price in the scrum half substitute role because I think George Horn offers a better impact from the bench if needed. Um, I think he's uh, a bit sharp, sharper than Ali Price in several areas of his game. And obviously Peter Horn, he can uh, operate at 10 or 12. And um, a couple of Ancat players, I've gone for Jake Kerr. Uh, obviously with our hooking problems at the moment outside of Stuart McAnally, I think Jake Kerr would be a decent addition to the bench and interesting to see if he comes off it. Um, and also Darcy Graham, who's been in very good form for Edinburgh, I think he merits his place just over Tommy Seymour. But um, again, this is um, my selection for against Italy, against Ireland. In, you know, he might go for more experienced uh, because it would obviously be very different opposition. But that is the team I'd pick. If I'm to go for a prediction, I'd say I think Scotland will beat Italy by 20 to 25 points. I don't see us losing this game at all. I think we're pretty well equipped to win it. But... Um, Obviously, we can't underestimate the Italians, especially after last year in Rome where uh, they nearly beat us and we needed a Greg Laidlaw last-minute penalty to save us. Um, but again, I think uh, Murray Field's going to play into our hands. I think, um, you know, the Italians, they don't look all that good, even though they're um, Bennett and Treviso have been doing pretty well this season, I must say. But uh, I think their biggest threats will obviously be Parise at 8 and you've got Tommy Allen at 10 who gave us a lot of problems last, last year. So they would, I say, be their biggest threats but they've also got some other good players as well. But again, I think we should be fairly comfortable so long as we don't do anything silly, so long as we keep our focus, so long as we don't get naive or too caught up into into being too arrogant I thought at the start of last season Six Nations we went into it I think the players admitted themselves they went into it like expecting to just go into Cardiff and win straight away and we got absolutely smashed so hopefully they're not going in with that mindset going in with some confidence but also going in with some caution as well to know that we're going to have to play our best to make sure we seal the win and get the bonus point okay so um, if we win that I think that could set us up for a good championship and I'm hoping it will but it's obviously doesn't get easier after that at all, so we'll see how it goes. Um, that's all I've got to say, really. I uh, hope the Six Nations is going to be as competitive as ever, and we're in for a good one in 2019. Thank you for listening. That's all I've got to say, and take care, guys. I'm going to hand back to Brandon now.